Oh, there's no such a thing. I never got stuck. <laughs> it didn't happen to me yet, no. No, it didn't happen, no. Whatever I do, I enjoy doing it. I grown up by the Danube in Hungary. I fished ever since I was two years old. We learned to fish any old ways. Casting, trolling, night fishing, uh, net fishing, you name it. You learn it all. And I learned it on my own. Nobody teach me. My parents were so busy, no time. Whatever you put in your mouth eat, you had to work for that. There were seven kids, and there was most of them not enough to eat, and not even decent clothes to wear, nice, no decent bed to sleep either. So I left at home when I was six years old, believe it or not. I went to a big farm, a mixed farm, you know. And Derek had a whole bed to myself in a host table. And a whole blanket was all mine. Nobody put off of it. So, and then I spent six years there. I learned a lot there, a hell of a lot on that farm. Yeah, for that, my, uh, my dad took me to a factory. He wanted me to learn to be a, a turning lead, but iron, eh? I didn't like that job. I didn't like the factory because uh, I couldn't eat. I like to work, but I can eat too. You know, in a bakery, you can pick up a bun and eat or something. Eh? Being a butcher, you can eat a piece of sausage or something. But you couldn't do that uh, when you work with steel. And then I grown up and uh, was here, was there, in different countries. I did this and that. I did all kinds of things. I did a lot, a lot of sport. I got big suitcase full of diplomas of all kinds. So I was quite active. And yeah, then I went to learn to be a baker for three years. I learned that trade. For that, then I applied and got papers to come to Canada. I had to go all the way to Italy to get a boat. The boat we went on, the ship that used to be the, the biggest uh, Italian Navy ship, eh? That was four feet shorter than the Titanic used to be. You see, here's the ship, when you we had your boat in the middle of it, you could look to the right, you could to the left, you couldn't see the end of it. It was that big. So I start loading six o'clock in the morning, you start let the passenger go on way before breakfast. And when, when I march to the second class deck, eh? A big long hallway and all of a sudden I could smell that bacon in the kitchen there or something. So, yeah, yeah. By the time I got there, there was a door wide open. I watched the bakery. There was a great big pile of dough on the table, but there was two bakers working. And I said, I'm a baker. And they threw an apron at me. When we were finishing the bakery, and one of the bakers says, where, which is your room where you stay? I told him, two class. Now, oh, that's no good. He came with me, he said, come on. And down there, he grabbed my uh, suitcase, I took my pack sack, and went up second class. That was a baker's quarter there, you know. There were eight bunk beds there, you know. Nice, big room. I even got paid, just like the bakers. Yeah, with Canadian dollars. Uh, that really made me happy, you know. I always liked castles. I always loved castles. And then when I came to Cortes Island here, then I found a perfect spot. I could build a castle, and that's where I built a castle. My whole property is a granite rock, and that's where the castle sits on. And I, I couldn't have a better foundation. Well, God walks in a mysterious way, you know. Here you are, a little boy leaves at home, six year old, and ends up as a king with a, with a six-story castle. Now, isn't that nice? I'm really proud of that. Medieval Paris, oh gosh, gee, it's unbelievable. Oh, all kinds of funny clothes they were made out of tin and, and, and chain and stuff like that. And they come with old swords, you know. And, mm, th those were the best parties I had in the castle. 